Every one of the four khulafa has a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an interaction with the angels that fits exactly what they are famous for. So with Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it is he is a siddiq The highest name that you could be written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with is a siddiq right? And there's even a hadith, hatta yuktaba indallahi siddiq, that a person continues to tell the truth and do the actions of truth until they're written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a person of truth. So this name comes down from Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, and this is what he's known by. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is a celebrity of sorts amongst the angels, right? On the day of judgment, they're all calling him to their gate of Jannah. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the one who's in touch with the truth, right? The one who, subhanAllah, is speaking to the angels and the angels speak through him in regards to his judgment, in regards to his perception, because the shayateen would be nowhere around him. And then Ali radiallahu anhu, right? Who is a man of courage, bravery, who is so courageous and so dedicated and relentless in his dedication that he would be blessed with Jibreel alayhi and Mikael alayhi salam next to him as he goes forth carrying the banner of Islam. Now with Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there is something very special about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu because usually we talk about the angels inspiring goodness in us, meaning the angels in our presence change our demeanor. In the case of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this man reached such a level that he changed the demeanor of the angels and that's not known with anybody else. And this goes back to a famous story with the Prophet ﷺ, with Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was sitting at home and as Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to visit the Prophet ﷺ, he was reclined. And so his, his leg was a little bit exposed. The Prophet ﷺ was in a relaxed state. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu came in, the house kind of stayed as it was. He sat with the Prophet ﷺ for some time. He asked the Prophet Sallallahu when he had to ask him, and then he left. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu came in, as the order always is. And the same thing happened. The Prophet Sallallahu remained in his place, and the house remained as it was. And Umar radiallahu anhu asked what he had to ask, and then he left when he got what he wanted. And then Uthman radiallahu anhu came. And Aisha radiallahu anha says the strangest thing happens that the Prophet Sallallahu suddenly starts to say, fix up the house, you know, put the blanket here. And he sits up alayhi salatu wasalam and he fixes his garments. And Uthman radiallahu anhu comes in and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi receives him in a very unique and special way. Now Aisha radiallahu anha is watching this. And when Uthman leaves, she says, I was very curious. You know, we know the status of Abu Bakr. We know the status of Umar. Why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi act this way with Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu? I asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Bakr came in, Umar came in. You didn't do what you did when Uthman came in. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah astahi mimman yastahi minhu al-mala'ika. Should I not be shy of someone whom the angels are shy from? Should I not be shy from someone whom the angels are shy from? Even the angels have haya around Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So SubhanAllah, Uthman changes the demeanor of the Prophet Sallallahu the best of all creation, and he changes the demeanor of the angels by just being who he is. Now, let's break this down because most people have heard this hadith about Uthman anhu, but there is wisdom to it. Number one, Uthman anhu, we know, is the nurain. He is the possessor of two lights. Someone who was so beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala blessed him by sending Jibreel alayhi salam to command the Prophet Sallallahu to marry not one, but two of his daughters to Uthman, right? So when Ruqayya radiallahu anha passes away, the Prophet Sallallahu receives a command through Jibreel alayhi salam to marry Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu as well. So he, he's the possessor of two lights. But think about all the ahadith, about what the angels praise a man for, and compare that to Uthman radiallahu anhu. Uthman is known for his lengthy recitation of the Qur'an, finishing an entire khatm in one rak'ah, right? Amongst those who it is said that he would read the Qur'an more than once a day sometimes, the entirety of the Qur'an. And he said, if the hearts are in a good place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are never full 
of the recitation of the Quran. They never get to a point where they're tired or they, they, they feel like they've reached their fill from the recitation of the Quran. He loves the Quran, so he recites the Quran constantly. Uthman anhu is the man who comes forth with sadaqa that is unparalleled, with charity that's unparalleled. So when you think about the angels that descend for the Quran, the angels that descend for sadaqa, right, for charity, crying out, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafa, that O oh Allah give to the one who gave and O oh Allah withhold from the one who withheld. Think about Uthman anhu coming forth every single time the Prophet ﷺ asks for anything. And the Prophet ﷺ holding the coins of Uthman and saying, nothing will harm Uthman after what he did today. But there is a particular trait, Al-Haya, Al-Haya. The concept of shyness, the concept of bashfulness. And there are multiple narrations about this concept of Haya. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned Al-Haya min al-Iman. Bashfulness is from faith. It's a form of Iman. The Prophet said, Al Haya la yati illa bi khair. That anything that comes through Haya, through this concept of modesty and shyness and bashfulness, anything that comes through it is good. Al Haya khairun kullu. Haya is all good. It is the main characteristic of Islam. And Uthman ta'ala anhu embodied Haya. Now, what makes it so impressive with Uthman ta'ala anhu that he was so shy? First of all, his shyness was in public and in private and it was with his family and it was with the community. And more than all of that, it was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had a shyness to sin, a shyness to do anything that would be displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had this modesty, this humility, this shyness that he carried throughout every facet of life. But the thing that makes it even more impressive is that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had every reason to not be shy, okay? You think about the things that make people a little arrogance that make people a little boastful, that cause people to degrade others. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had beauty. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had wealth. Uthman radiallahu anhu had the look, he had the wealth, he had the clothes, he had the status in society. And with all of that, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was the most humble and shy person that you would meet. And the ulama say, subhanAllah, the haya of the malaika with Uthman is not that they would be shy to be in his presence. No, it's that they longed for his presence, but that their demeanor changed in the presence of Uthman ta'ala anhu. And they were shy in his presence, including Jibreel alayhi salam. And part of that was what? They said, Ya Rasulullah, a man that will be killed by his people. Despite all this goodness that he does for the people, the shyness of Uthman ta'ala anhu is a contributing factor to his assassination because he refused to use his position with the people or his previous good deeds to enforce authority over the people. Uthman anhu instead held back. And so the angels knowing what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Uthman ta'ala anhu also caused them to have a shyness in his presence.